name is Chinua Achebe. I am a poet and novelist. I was deeply moved to learn of the initiative of those writers who decided to do something about the world in which we live. To replace the sounds of war with the sound of a festival, even for a short while, to switch off, even for a moment, the noise of violence and death, and bring back the voices of literature and of peaceful conversation. <laughs> Turning in the wide ninja, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. May anarchies lose the world. For me, there are three reasons for becoming a writer. Number one, the joy of writing. Second, that you have information of a unique story waiting to come out. And third, which you learn in the process of becoming, is that you consider the whole project worth the considerable trouble. I have sometimes called it terms of imprisonment will have to endure to bring it to fruition. Albert Chinualumogu Achebe was born in the Igbo village of Nobi on November 16, 1930. Achebe's parents, Isaiah Okafo Achebe and Janet Ananechi Ilwebulam, were converts to the Protestant Church Mission Society, CMS, in Nigeria. The elder Achebe stopped practicing the religion of his ancestors, but he respected its traditions and sometimes incorporated elements of its rituals into his Christian practice. The elder Achebe was a cat case and a teacher. Chinua's unabbreviated name, Chinua Lomogo, may God fight on my behalf, was a prayer for divine protection and stability. There is a proverb in your tradition which says, wherever something stands, something else will stand beside it. Well, how do you interpret that? It means that there is no one way to anything. Um, the people who made that proverb, the Igbo people, are very insistent on this, that um, there is no absolute anything. Um, even good things they are against excess. Um, their world is a world of, of duality. Um, it is good to be brave, they say, but also remember that the coward survives the, the brave man. The Achebe family had five other surviving children named in a similar fusion of traditional words relating to their new religion. Frank Okofu, John Chukwemeka Ifai Chuku, Zenobia Uzoma, Augustine Nduka, and Grace Mwaneka. When the last daughter Grace was born, the family moved to Isaiah Achebe's ancestral village of Ikenga in Ogidi, in what is now the Nigerian state of Anambra. A tarred road has long been built in Ikenga, and the Achebe home has been built and rebuilt to reflect modern standards. Achebe had once been the chairman of Ogidi Town Union. Chinua's mother and sister Zenobia Uzoma told him many stories as a child, which he repeatedly requested. His education was furthered by the colleges his father hung on the walls of their home, as well as almanacs and numerous books. 
including a prose adaptation of a Midsummer Night's Dream written around 1590 and an evil version of The Pilgrim's Progress, 1678. Chinua also eagerly anticipated traditional village events like the frequent masquerade ceremonies, which he recreated later in his novels and stories. Chinua began his formal education at Anglican Church at Akbakugo, Ogidi, learning the four R's, reading, writing, arithmetic and religion. In 1936, Achebe entered St. Philip Central School. Despite his protests, he spent a week in the religious class for young children, but was quickly moved to a higher class when the school's chaplain took note of his intelligence. At the age of 12, Achebe moved away from his family to the village of Nekede, four kilometers from Oweri. He enrolled as a student at the Central School, where his older brother, John, taught. In Nekede, Achebe gained an appreciation for Umbari, a traditional art from which seeks to invoke the god's protection through symbolic sacrifices in the form of sculpture and college. When the time came to change to secondary school in 1944, Achebe sat entrance examinations for and was accepted at both the prestigious Dennis Memorial Grammar School in Onitsha and the even more prestigious Government College in Omahia. There, Achebe started to explore the school's wonderful library. There he discovered Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery, 1901, the autobiography of an American former slave. Achebe found it sad, but it showed him another dimension of reality. He also read classic novels such as Gulliver's Travels, 1726, David Copperfield, 1850, and Treasure Island, 1883, together with the tales of colonial therein duels such as H. Ryder Haggard's Alan Quatermain, 1887, and John Buchan's Prester John, 1910. Achebe later recalled that as a reader, he took sides with the white characters against the savages and even developed a dislike for Africans. The white man was good and reasonable and intelligent and courageous. The savages arrayed against him were sinister and stupid or, at the most, cunning. I hated their gods. In 1948, the preparation for independence, Nigeria's first university opened, known as University College, now the University of Ibadan. It was an associate college of the University of London. Achebe obtained such high marks in the entrance examination that he was admitted as a major scholar in the university's first intake and given a bursary to study medicine. After a year of grueling work, However, he decided science was not for him and he changed to English, history and theology. 